Hello, friends, and welcome to Sleep Tight Stories. Did you ever have to stay after school for tutoring? I didn't, but Clark tells me that he did and didn't enjoy it very much. Clark had a habit of daydreaming in math class, which eventually resulted in poor grades and staying behind after school to catch up. Our daughter had the same problem. Both wish OutSchool had been around. They could have gotten the help they needed online, anywhere, anytime they needed it. OutSchool offers live, online, private classes for kids of all grade levels and abilities. They have the widest variety of teachers and subjects to help any kid. OutSchool's vetted teachers give your child the one-on-one -on -one attention they deserve, helping them learn, and build confidence in the best way that works for them. There's one-on-one -on -one tutoring for every subject, from reading and writing to math and Spanish and beyond. Without school, your kid can get the help they need anytime, anywhere, in any subject. OutSchool makes it easy, affordable, and convenient to find a private tutor for your child. Right now, for a limited time, You'll save $15 on your child's first tutoring session when you go to outschool.com slash sleep tight and use code sleep tight. That's O-U-T-S-C-H-O-O-L dot com slash sleep tight. Code sleep tight. To save $15 on your child's first private tutoring session. Outschool.com slash sleep tight. Code sleep tight. I'd like to say hello to Tristan and Gracie in California. Hello to Lily in Nelson, British Columbia, Canada. Hello to Harmony Blue from Minnesota, USA. Hello to Hiraya from the Philippines. Hello to Emma from Ormond Beach, Florida. Hello to Esme in St. John, New Brunswick. And hello to Nico Rose from Lanceville, British Columbia. I'd like to say a happy belated birthday to Hugo from St. John, New Brunswick, who turned eight on September 27th. A happy belated birthday to Rowan, who turned six on October 14th. A happy belated birthday to Sophie from Minnesota, who turned seven on October 16th. A happy belated birthday to Sawyer, who turned six on October 16th. Happy birthday to Ira, who is turning seven years old on October 17th. Happy birthday to Annika from Levine, Arizona, who is turning seven on October 17th. Happy birthday to Gracie Trout, who lives in California, who is turning seven on October 17th. Happy birthday to Sailor, who is turning three on October 19th. Happy birthday to Noah, who is turning 10 on October 19th. Happy birthday to Neva in London, England, who is turning five on October 20th. Happy birthday to Eliora, who is turning eight on October 22nd. And happy birthday to Noah, who is turning eight on October 22nd. Happy birthday to you all. I hope you have a wonderful day. Lenora is in a new home, in a new school, and a new place. She has been very busy getting used to this new place and hasn't noticed that fall has arrived and things are starting to cool down. For Lenora, that means Halloween is coming soon and that is her favorite time of the year. When she loses a tooth, though, things are not looking so good. The Vampire and the Tooth Fairy. Thank you to Annika for the inspiration for this story.
Lenora and her family had moved to Charlottetown from Europe this past summer, and she was so busy adjusting to her new home, starting a new school, and all the other excitements of being in a new place that she hadn't noticed the chill in the air and the change in color. After school, as she was walking down the street that took her to her house, she noticed the colors yellow, red, and brown, which could mean only one thing. Fall was here, and with it, her favorite time of year, Halloween. Lenora absolutely loved, loved, loved Halloween. She loved the candy, the food, and all the fun surrounding the day, and especially the night. Halloween was a time when she and her family could reveal their true selves, to be spooky, a little scary, and have fun with all the people in their neighborhood. You see, Lenora Bogdan and her family were vampires. Arriving home, she ran into the kitchen, and judging by the smells, it was fall treat season. The smell of cinnamon, pumpkin, and other spices she didn't know the name of filled the air. Will we practice tonight, Mommy? Lenora asked excitedly. Practice what, my little princess? Her mother replied, pretending not to know what she was talking about. You know, practice being spooky so that we can get ready for Halloween. It's coming soon, right? I know it is. The air is cool outside and the leaves are all red, brown, and orange. You only use these awesome smelling spices just before Halloween. It's our favorite time of year, right? Yes, it is, Lenora. It's fall and Halloween is coming. That's why I am home baking all kinds of goodies so that we can share it with our new friends. And I'll have some too. We would never forget to give you lots of sweet treats this time of year. But remember, we are living in a new home this year. There might be some differences from last time. But everyone here still celebrates Halloween, don't they, Mommy? They get dressed up as ghosts, monsters, aliens, and other spooky creatures, right? I believe so. Don't you worry, Princess. We are going to have the best Halloween ever. Now, why don't you go and get washed up for dinner? Your father will be home soon, and he will want to know all about your day at school. Okay, Lenora said as she walked stiffly away like she was an ancient mummy that had risen to give people hugs. At dinner, Lenora shared all about her day at school. She talked about her new teachers, her classmates, including Charlie, who just moved here too, and her first practice with the basketball team. It was a great day, Daddy, and everyone seems really nice so far. I'm glad to hear that, Princess. I think we made a good decision to move to this small town here on the island. Are you both ready for dessert? Lenora's mother said. I've got some hard pumpkin spice cookies. Yummy, Lenora said. Lenora was so excited that she forgot to first dip her cookie in milk, and she bit down hard. Ouch, she said. What's wrong, princess? Her mother asked. I think I hurt my tooth, mummy, Lenora said as she stuck her finger in her mouth. She hadn't hurt her tooth, but she sped up what was happening naturally. Mommy, my tooth is loose. That's okay, princess. It's all part of growing up. You are losing your baby teeth so that new teeth can grow in, her mother said. But, but, but... 
It's my fang. It can't come out now. It's almost Halloween. And how can I be myself? How can I be spooky without two fangs? Let me look at your tooth, her father said. Yes, it's really loose, princess. I think it has to come out. Are you sure, daddy? I mean, a wiggly fang is better than no fang at all. I'm sorry, Lenora. I'll take it out for you when we go upstairs to get ready for bed, her father said. Okay, daddy, Lenora said with an incredibly sad look on her face. Don't be so sad, princess. Look on the bright side. When you place your tooth under your pillow tonight, the tooth fairy will visit and leave you a gift. Will she leave me a new fang? Lenora said. No, I'm afraid not, her mother said. You are going to have to wait until the new one grows in. Okay. I don't think I feel like practicing being spooky tonight, Lenora said with a sad face. Are you sure, Lenora? This is one of your favorite things to do before Halloween. We always try on our traditional capes, black suits, and make our faces look really pale. It's so much fun, her mother said. It's not fun without my fang, Lenora said as she got away from the table and walked slowly up the stairs to her room. That night after stories, her mother tucked her into bed and put her fang under her pillow. Go to sleep, little princess, so that the tooth fairy will come and visit, her mother said. Her mother gave her a kiss and whispered, I love you, Lenora. I love you too, Mommy. Later, Lenora was woken by what sounded like little bells or chimes, which quietly surrounded her, seemingly coming from all directions. She slowly opened her eyes to see a small little creature flying around her room, leaving a rainbow trail in her wake. Hello? Lenora said, am I awake or is this a really interesting dream? Oh, hi there, Lenora. My name is Alette and you are supposed to be asleep, she said as she landed on the night table beside Lenora's bed, glowing like a soft lamp. Are you what I think you are? Lenora asked quietly. I don't know. What do you think I am? Alette said with a laugh. You are either something from my imagination or you are the tooth fairy. That's a pretty good guess. So are you happy to receive a small gift? Not really. I mean, I appreciate getting a gift, but what I would really like is my tooth back, Lenora said with a pout. But losing your baby teeth is something to look forward to. It means you are growing up and you might get a gift from the Tooth Fairy. Don't you think that's a good thing? Yes, but it's just that this is my favorite time of year. For a whole week, my family practices being spooky, dressing in traditional clothes so that we can have fun on Halloween. It's when we can express our true selves. That sounds like a lot of fun. Lots of kids around the world have traditions similar to this. I bet you have treats, too. Yeah, I love all the spicy treats that we have. It was one of those treats that caused my tooth to come out faster than was planned. Now I don't think I can be spooky, and my whole week and Halloween is ruined, Lenora said, sounding very sad. Why would a missing tooth cause that? I'm not supposed to say, but I guess since you are the Tooth Fairy, you won't tell anyone else. Tooth Fairies can keep a secret, right? My lips are sealed, Alette said, as she pretended to zip close her mouth with her fingers. My family and I are vampires from the Bogdan line of vampires. And because vampires have a bad reputation, we have to keep it a secret. That is, until this time of year comes around. Then, we show our spooky side. 
and a big part of being a spooky vampire is our fangs. And now that I have lost my fang, I don't look the same and won't be spooky. It's very disappointing. Surely being spooky does not rely upon any one physical feature or your appearance. Being true to yourself doesn't require a fang. It comes from within. I'm sure this Halloween you can still be the spookiest young vampire the world has ever known. You just have to believe in yourself and try. Do people get spooked when you just show your fang, or is it something else you do? Alette asked. Well, we all act a little scary and try to walk around outside talking in weird voices, sometimes surprising others who are out, jumping out from behind trees and stuff like that. Then, after we either give our friends a fright or maybe make them laugh, we give them some candy treats. It sounds to me that your spookiness has more to do with your behavior than your fangs. And I imagine the costume helps a bit too, Alette said with a smile. It would be unfortunate to let a missing tooth ruin your whole week. Why don't you try? It's better to try than to not try at all, my mom used to always say. Starting to smile, Lenora said, I think my mother has said that same thing many times, but I appreciate hearing it from you. Good. I hope you will try your best, and maybe I will be one of those who you make feel spooky. You will be out at Halloween too? Lenora asked. There are always fairies. How else would we get treats to share with our friends? Now, it's getting late. Why don't you close your eyes and think spooky thoughts and have a great sleep, Alette said as she slowly flew off from Lenora's bedside table. Thank you, Alette. Good night, she yawned. The next morning, Lenora woke up and went downstairs for breakfast, which was pumpkin pancakes with spooky spider web shapes all over them. This looks like a yummy breakfast, Mommy, Lenora said as she rubbed her belly to get it ready to eat lots of food. I hope you like it. Did the Tooth Fairy come for a visit while you were asleep, her mother asked? She did, and I really appreciate the gift she left me. I'm happy to hear that, Lenora. Mommy, I think I will practice being spooky tonight with you and Daddy. I'm so happy to hear that, Lenora. It's such a fun time for us. And you know there are many ways to be spooky. You don't need to rely upon your fangs. Fangs are not the only characteristic that make us spooky vampires. I know, Mommy. Alette, that is the Tooth Fairy's name, told me pretty much the same thing. I mean, I kind of knew it already, but she helped me realize it more. I don't need both my fangs to be spooky. That sounds like a great gift that the Tooth Fairy left. Yeah, she left me the best gift in the world. And that's the end of our story. Good night. Sleep tight.